Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And today I'm going to be showing you how to deploy a VPS to the Vulture Cloud. And just keep in mind that this video is geared towards uh, mostly beginners. I mean, uh, no vices, intermediates, advanced people probably might not learn anything, but uh, can't hurt to watch, right? So before we go ahead and get started, I do want to mention that I have an affiliate link in the description where if you sign up through my link, you will get $100 to uh, test out the platform. And this credit will be valid for around two weeks, uh, something like two weeks, I believe. And on the bright side is if you decide to go ahead and keep using the platform and actually start using real money, uh, I will go ahead and get a commission of $35, which I can't understate how profoundly that helps the channel uh, continue and continue videos like this uh, free of charge. So if you don't already have an account, please sign up through my affiliate link. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So once you have your browser open, you're going to want to go ahead and make an account through the link in the description. Once you have your account made, you're going to want to go ahead and go to my.vulture.com if you're not redirected. Then you're going to end up here on the products tab. Once you're here, you're going to want to go over to this blue plus, hover over it, and then click deploy new server. Once you're on this page, you're going to want to make sure to click the cloud compute uh, option here, square, whatever that's called. Um, scrolling down, you're going to want to click regular performance so we get the best pricing as we're not building mission critical uh, components just yet. Then you're going to want to close, choose the location that's closest to you. For me, that's going to be New York, New Jersey. Scrolling down, you're going to want to select the distribution or operating system that's best suitable for you. Now, if you're a beginner, I'm going to recommend that you stick to Ubuntu and you're going to want to choose the latest LTS version. LTS just means long term support. For me, as of 2023, at the beginning of the year, that is 22.04. Then we're going to want to choose the $5 a month option as we're just playing around and uh, learning how to operate our VPS. And a nice thing about Vultures is that they offer automatic backups for your VPS. And I believe that just starts at 20% uh, of the cost of the VPS. So again, we're not building anything mission critical just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for now. And I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, IPv6 enabled just because uh, why not? Maybe I'll choose to do something uh, in the future with that. And we don't need DDoS protection, cloud initialization, not really. And uh, VPCs, not yet, although I will have a video covering those later, as that's pretty useful once you have um, multiple servers in the cloud. And then, as you can see, I have a ton of SSH keys here. And I'm going to go ahead and add my latest one. Now, to do this, if you're on a Mac, all you have to do is simply open up your terminal, like so. Uh, if you've never opened a terminal, all you have to do is just type terminal and spotlight search, and it should be the first result. And then next, you're simply going to want to type ssh-keygen-trsa space dash b. B is going to be the bit size or the byte size, excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and type 8192 as that's going to be eight bytes. And you can click enter and then it'll ask you if you want to secure your SSH key via password. If you want to do that, that's fine. If not, that's also fine. Uh, I recommend for beginners that they choose not to do that as that's just another password to remember. And if you forget that password, uh, you're pretty much SOL. Okay, and then once that's done, we will have a public SS pro public and private SSH key generated. And you can go ahead and retrieve that via typing cat space tilde forward slash dot SSH IDRSA dot pub. And then as you see, we get a long string outputted here. You could simply just copy this, go here, paste it in the 
text area there and then we're gonna want to put a name here and as you saw on the previous page I pretty much named mine random things and I'm gonna go ahead and name this one newest newest Mac add SSH key and we're gonna go ahead and select that SSH key we just added and lastly we can keep no firewall on and then we can give our server a host name and or a label if we want for the host name i'm just going to go ahead and type youtube and the label is automatically populated and then yet again i'm going to go ahead and turn auto backups off all right and the last thing we have to do is click deploy now and as you can see our server is now deploying for about 30 seconds you'll see the status change from deploying to running and that means our server is now accessible to us via our SSH key. So we're going to want to go ahead and click into our server here, copy the IP address, open our terminal backup. And now we can simply type SSH root at paste that IP address there and then click enter. Then you'll get a nice message saying that uh, basically you're connecting to a new host and you should verify the authenticity of it. Simply go ahead and type yes. And we are now in our server. Uh, some things you can do on the server real quick are type htop. And this is basically like a task manager uh, text version. And as you can see, there is a report on the memory usage, how much swap is being used, CPU usage. Uh, we have the uptime, the load average, and the amount of tasks running. Hey guys, producer here. Uh, I just wanted to hop in before Nathan completely explained everything wrong about the load average. So basically the load average is uh, based on one minute, five minute, 15 minute time intervals. And essentially, what the load average represents is the amount of tasks waiting to be executed by the CPU. And that's simply it. Again, for beginners, this probably isn't too uh, keen to know about. And back to Nathan. Questions, concerns, comments, or pretty much anything of the like, please, please leave a comment in the comments below. Pretty much anything on your mind. I don't even care if it's not related to the video. Uh, anything's nice to know. Uh, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if this content helped you at all. And I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, happy New Year's, I guess. Cheers.